Uh, welcome back to our session, which is guiding you uh, for paper two. Uh, we will be looking at questions, uh, most likely examinable questions, uh, which are going to come in your paper two, both in prelims and the uh, final exams. <clears throat> don't forget that uh, yeah, in most cases, we don't set new questions, but we use the questions which are uh, prevailing and then we modify them. So I'll be showing you how to answer these questions and I'll show you different questions. Uh, some of them I'll be just uh, speaking about them and then how do you answer those questions. So uh, keep uh, on uh, so that uh, you don't miss out anything and don't forget to subscribe, like and share to others so that you can also benefit. MCID as usual. Let's start with the question three. Uh, the diagram represents the portion of uh, nucleic acids. Before I start uh, this, don't forget that we have we have specific topics which we are supposed to look at uh, in paper two. The first topic is DNA code of life. Uh, the second topic is meiosis. Uh, the third topic is genetics. The fourth topic is uh, uh, evolution. Uh, but both evolution in natural selection and then human uh, evolution. So it means that these are the topics which are being set in paper two. So when you are reading, you must focus on these uh, four topics or five topics. So we're going to look at all questions and then the most likely examinable questions or questions you most likely to find in your paper. If they bring a diagram like this, you have to find out which diagram is representing. So uh, we represent, this diagram represents uh, DNA. Why DNA? Because of this, the weak hydrogen bonds. And then um, it's two stranded. Uh, so uh, you, what are some of the questions which are most likely to be asked about the structure of DNA? Apart from labeling the structure of DNA, they can ask you to describe the structure. Apart from labeling it, describe the structure of DNA and they put their uh, six marks, whereby you have tell us DNA is made up of nucleotides, each nucleotide is made up of uh, a phosphate, uh, a, a nitrogenous base, a phosphate and uh, a nitrogenous base, a sugar and a phosphate. It forms two strands, each strand uh, forms two strands, each strand um, is joined together. So you describe the, the characteristics of DNA, basically what DNA has. It, it, it forms two strands uh, which twist around to form a double helix. So uh, you can get the six marks from there. So in this case, uh, let's label it and then find out what is a V. What is V? V is the nucleotide uh, because a nucleotide is a, a nitrogenous base, a sugar and a phosphate. So this is a sugar and then nitrogenous base and then a phosphate. So this circle or box is showing you a nucleotide. Then Z is weak hydrogen bond. Use the word weak. Weak. We want to see the word weak. Then hydrogen, hydrogen bonds. Weak hydrogen bond. And then this is uh, um, a nitrogenous base. A nitrogenous base. And then also this is a, uh, a phosphate. Sorry, a nitrogenous. A, a sugar molecule, which is in this case, it is a ribose, deoxyribose sugar. And then Y is the phosphate group, as we saw it here. So now, since you know that this is a structure and you know how to label it, now let's talk about uh, name the nucleic acid which is being represented. So we have seen it that this is the 
and A. They're saying name two places in animal um, cell where you can find this uh, DNA. Where can you find this DNA in animal? You can find in animal in two places. That is in the nucleus, nucleus, and then in mitochondrion. Mitochondrion. Uh, if it's one nuclei, if it's one it's mitochondrion, if there are many mitochondria, if there are many nuclei, uh, nuclei, if there are, it's one, it's called nucleus. So it should not confuse you. They are saying name portion V. They are looking for portion V. What is portion V? We say that these are the building blocks. This is the building block of DNA. So it is the nucleo. Molecule Y. Where is Y? Molecule Y is a phosphate. We have seen it that it is a phosphate group. Then they are saying that bond z where is bond z bond z is weak hydrogen bonds so i think we have seen uh the answer here weak hydrogen bond we have seen here phosphate group nitrogen base we have seen it and then portion w which is the nucleic acid sorry which is the nucleotide what is the natural shape when they say natural shape uh, many students they say helical double helical no, the only answer we accept in exam is double helix. Nothing else. You write something different from that, we won't give you a tick. Name the process during which this molecule makes exact copy of itself. How does DNA make exact copy of itself? How does it replicate? So the answer is DNA, DNA replication. So that is the process by which DNA makes exact copy of itself. Why does it occur? Some questions can come here. Why does DNA replication occurs? It occurs to increase or to double, to double the chromosome number, to double the chromosome number. Where does it occur? When you talk about where does it occur, then you talk about the nucleus. And then when does it occur? It occurs during inter interface yes uh, and then uh why does it occur why does it occur we say that to double to double the chromosome the chromosome chromosome num to double the chromosome number and then lastly uh how does it occur that is the process of dna replication if they bring a question like this uh, how do you answer this is a dna molecule so if you look at it here you see it is a, uh, a dna molecule and why is it dna molecule because of the thymine which is indicated in the nitrogenous nitrogenous base and then also the weak hydrogen bonds two strands so it identifies it to be a dna molecule and it cannot be rna because even here they say that this is they say that this is what this is a dna replication yeah so question the molecule w with molecule w we have seen it molecule w is here it is a nucleotide, correct. Uh, molecule, uh, molecule U, what is molecule U? The whole molecule, the whole molecule is DNA, correct. Then they are saying that Z, Z is weak hydrogen bonds, correct. And then what is V? How do we know the nitrogenous base V? Because nitrogenous base uh, uh, is compatible to this or complementary to this, therefore, and this is given it here, which is thymine, therefore V is equal to A, which is adenine. And then they are saying that, name the part of molecule W, uh, W, X, and X and Y. X is the phosphate group, correct, and then Y is the oxidable sugar. Why don't I say? sugar 
you have to, to be specific because this is DNA. So it is deoxyribose sugar. Where in the cell does this process take place? Where do we find, we have answered this question that this process occurs in the uh, nucleus, in the nucleus. And then they're saying that, name the phase of cell cycle where replication takes place. We have already answered it and then we say that inter, inter, interphase. So at least when they bring such questions, you must be able to answer accordingly. So first try to answer uh, what is being labeled. What The moment uh, you know the, what the picture depicts uh, or what a picture represents, at least you are able to bring your mind and then you concentrate in that area. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time here, only maybe uh, if I see a very difficult question there, then that's when I can try to answer relative to this because I wanted to go to transcription and the translation. But uh, molecule C, molecule C is a uh, phosphate and then uh, this is a nitrogenous base and then this is phosphate, uh, sugar, you observe sugar and then nitrogenous base, it forms what you call a nucleotide. And then weak hydrogen bonds, and then uh, this is a sugar, uh, this is a complementary base, so this is a complementary base, and then they are here, yes, they say this weak hydrogen bond, and then you have this, this, how do you call that? That is not a strand. We call it a back, back, backbone. And then the whole strand must include with the, the nitrogenous base and this. So the difference between a whole strand and a backbone is the backbone does not involve the nitrogenous bases. If you are asked what is this bond, this is a phosphate sugar bond, but it is a covalent bond. If you refer it to uh, uh, physical science. Okay. Uh, two scientists who discovered James Watson and Francis Crick, name one organelle where DNA is found in the nucleus and the mitochondria, describe how mutation of DNA may change the structure of the protein. The moment DNA molecule changes, it's going to change the sequence of the bases on messenger. And messenger RNA is going to change the sequence of the amino acids in which they are being brought to, to form a protein. <clears throat> so if the, a different protein is formed, uh, if the amino acid leads to a different sequence, uh, then a different protein is going to be changed and or is going to be formed. Then amino acid leads to the same sequence as previous one. Then the protein is not going to, a new protein is not going to be formed. Tablet to differ, structure difference. Now, if the major point here is structure, the word is structure between the monomer, and they are saying about the monomer, monomer of DNA and RNA. So here they are talking about the monomer. And if you look at the monomer, they are looking at the nucleotide, the nucleotide of DNA, of DNA, and the nucleotide of RNA. So you only look at the structure which is the nucleotide of which the nucleotide is made up of a phosphate a sugar and then the nitrogenous base so there are only two differences here you can look at and look at the sugar dna nucleotide has has uh, uh deoxyribose deoxy deoxyribose sugar while rna has ribose sugar and then uh dna has thymine or RNA has uracil. So after that, you draw a table. It must be a complete table. Yes, it must be a complete table. And then you put DNA and then you put RNA at least. Then you get a tick here, a tick here, a tick here, a tick here, and a tick for the table, which makes it to be uh, five marks. And if you find a question like this and tablet and there is only 10 minutes or 10 seconds remaining, don't waste time. At least you can give, grab that one mark. Just draw a table like this and then put DNA and then put RNA. Yeah, uh, even if you don't have anything here, then we shall come and give you a tick. At least you will score that one tick. So, yeah, please try to use uh, 
different ways in which you can get marks. Yes. Yeah. So this is the same thing we have been trying to discuss. Phosphate, you have seen them. And then M2 process, which require the strand of the nucleotides uh, in a single strand of DNA. Uh, sometimes people think that DNA can be a single strand. It can be a single strand. <clears throat> what makes this one to be DNA is because of the, the thymine, which is being indicated there. So thymine is in this form, while adenine is in that form. Uh, then they're saying that how many nucleotides are represented in the diagram? Yes, let's try to answer this. How many nucleotides? A nucleotide is a phosphate, nitrogenous base, and a sugar. So this is one nucleotide, the second nucleotide, the third nucleotide, and then this is the fourth nucleotide. So the answer is going to be four nucleotides. And then they're saying phosphate molecule, then phosphate molecules, you just count them one, two, three, four. So the answer is also four. And then they're saying that uh, how many nucleotides, uh, okay, I done with that. Sugar molecule, uh, there are four, but sugar, this is the phosphate, and then this is the sugar. Write down the nitrogen base from top to bottom um, as indicated by the arrow. Uh, as complementary base strand and this molecule. Here is, is just uh, T, uh, they're saying on DNA. Complementary, so they are not talking about convert it into RNA. Don't forget that A goes with the T, then C goes with uh, G. So whenever there is A, T, you put A, whenever there is C, you put uh, G, whenever there is A, you put uh, T whenever they receive put G. So basically, that's how it's supposed to be answered. Name two process that require the DNA strands of DNA strands of DNA molecule to separate into single strand as shown in the diagram. Ah, uh, which which processes two processes? Uh, we only find this in when the DNA replication DNA DNA replication is going to take place. And also we find this when there is a transcription. Transcription, remember here, you form uh, two strands, uh, two separate strands. Each strand is acting as a template. Well, here you form two separate strands. Only one, only one strand will act as a template. And while here, two uh, strands will act as a template. So these are the two processes which make DNA molecule to open. DNA profiling um, is also not <clears throat> a big deal. Uh, technique, you have to know how to identify this. Read the question very well and then find out. Don't just answer the question. Detectives were investigating crime scene found the blood on the broken window. Then they suspect that uh, the blood was the blood was that of the criminal. To identify the criminal, they analyze the DNA sample from different DNA sample from the blood and compare it to the four suspects. Now, look, this is DNA sample, and then these are the suspects. It means that these are the DNA they found on there, uh, but you have to see where it is corresponding this one goes with that uh this one goes with that still yeah this one is that use a ruler to identify this that this with this this with this this with this this with this so it means that jenny uh is 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 a suspect for that case uh whose dna profile is matching with the dna sample obtained from the crime scene and the technique which was used it's dna uh, profiling technique is DNA profiling and what is being shown here is a DNA profile so you must know the difference DNA profile is not a technique DNA profile is what you obtain when you analyze the DNA sample so who was the possible criminal we have seen it is Jenny uh, because the DNA uh, profile or the the profile the, the DNA profile of uh, bars uh, there of, 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 of sample in a sample profile is is matching with the profile of Jenny or the band of DNA profile sample they are matching with that of Jenny. 
So set one other use of DNA a technique of state other use of the technique identified in the diag in, in the in, in the question above meaning that the dna profiling what is it used it can be used to identify the relatives we are they have talked about the criminal this is, so you don't talk about that anymore so talk about the uh, identification of the the perfect organ donor you can talk about lost uh, relatives we can talk about um diagnosis of the inherited diseases so there are so many uh, uh uses you can use to uh, uh when you are dealing with it in a profiling so it's the same thing you see that is the same thing i don't usually take too much time here because these questions are really um open who is a suspect you know how we have identified it what diagram is dna profile what what does the diagrams above represent they're not saying the technique they're asking for the diagram therefore it is dna profile not dna profiling because here they said which technique name the technique so it's dna profiling but here it is dna profile we suspect look at the bands and then you match them give a reason uh so the suspect if you look at them you find out that q is most likely to be the suspect because the bands of uh broken glass uh they are matching with that of uh with that of q so they're saying that name two possible disadvantage of using this evidence in the court it might not be accurate a hundred percent uh because number one they can human error number one and also it may not be unique if the, a small sample is used also uh, it, it they can a human being can manipulate them so it may not be 100 percent accurate so we have seen many questions concerning about dna profiling download this and then try to uh, do these questions where you get stuck come back to me uh, I'm, I'm 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 asking me questions i'll be able to uh to uh, help you out uh my number is always on the website 0848331738 yes and then speak to m saidi who is always ready to help you out uh -huh. then another question uh, is still the same tablet whenever you talk about tablet make sure that you draw a nice table and then so that you get that one mark that's why there are five because they're asking for two two uh they, they give you two marks there and then one mark for tabulating describe the process that is being re, uh, represented or responsible for formation of molecule b so here molecule b is messenger RNA. why messenger RNA? it's because of uh this this so this is not you see this is messenger RNA, which is uracil. Therefore, um, and also one strand is being used. So there's evidence to show that this is a transcription because they are saying this is a non-coding strand. So it means that only this is acting as a template. template. Yes. So they are saying that describe. So what are they looking for here? uh describe the process that is responsible for formation of b uh if you look at b uh is messenger so uh you describe how do you describe here let me just talk about it as i told you talk about dna double helix unwind weak hydrogen bond break and unzip so when the weak hydrogen bond break it's the same thing saying unzip so you get one mark there to form two separate the word separate must be there to separate strand only one you see it here that only one is acting as a what is acting as a template only one is acting as a template so it's 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 it's, it's, it's being shown there that this one is acting as a template and then uh, um uh, using free floating messenger rna so you have to write messenger rna nucleotide yes to form a complementary strand where adenine goes with uracil and then ad uh, uh, guanine goes with cytosine adenine goes with uracil and then uh, guanine goes with cytosine 
the complementary strand move out of the nucleus via the nuclear pore to the cytoplasm uh, on the ribosome. So basically, that's what you're supposed to explain. Please don't try to uh, bridge it because it's a process. One step leads to the other. If you start with the what is on the, at, at the bottom and then you start with it, then you, you lose marks uh, because the sequence is not the same. So you cannot um, start with the last step and then you, you end with the first step. You have to start with the first step and then you end with it. Uh, yes. So molecule B, we said it is messenger RNA. Then the process is transcription. Uh, explain how the protein molecule would be affected if codon GUU is changed to CGC. So if it here it depends on two things. If there is a table, yes. Now you compare the table and see if it's gonna lead to a different amino acid. But because now this is open, then we assume that it's gonna be a different amino acid. For example, if you say that you started with GUU, yes, and then GUC from this to that. If this, let me explain this. If this is tryptophan, yes, codes for tryptoso, tryptophan, and this one also codes for tryptophan. Mm -hmm. However much this has been changed to this, it's going to code for the same amino acid. Therefore, the, pro the functioning of the protein is not going to change. But if this uh, tryptophan, and then now this one codes for, for, for example, leucine, leucine, then it means that there will be a change in the functioning of the protein because this is tryptophan, and then this is leucine. Therefore, a different protein will be changed, uh, will be formed, and then still the functioning of the protein will also change. So explain how the protein molecule would be affected if this is changed to this. So therefore, you tell us that um, if U G G U C is changed to G U C. GUU is changed to GUC um, because they say that codon this changed to because this when they say codon it means that we have started from the messenger RNA. Then this will lead to a uh, different sequence of amino acid. Different amino acid will be brought to the molecule or to the messenger RNA. Not messenger RNA will be brought to different amino acids will be brought to uh, uh, um, ribosome and then uh, a different protein will be formed. So that's basically you have to understand. And then when you come here, this is trans uh, translation uh, because it is occurring on the ribosome. So what is A? A is messenger RNA. What is B is the ribosome. And then what is C? C is the transfer, uh, is the transfer RNA. What is Z? Z is the amino acid. So this is the monomers amino, amino acids, monomers of the protein. And then this is the transfer RNA. We have seen it. And then this is the ribosome, ribosome. And then this is the messenger RNA. So basically, ah, uh, you need to do that. And then what is this? These are three bases. So therefore, these are codons. Yeah, remember uh, the three bases on the DNA, we call them codes. And then three bases on the messenger, we call them uh, codons. And then three bases on the transfer, we call them anti anti codons. Organelle X, what is Organelle X? We have seen it. We have seen all the questions. You see now, when you start with the trying to label them, you'll be able to answer all the questions. Molecule W formed, uh, you see, Organelle Z, X, uh, we have seen it, ribosome, uh, monomer W, monomer W, the monomer. They are saying the monomer of molecule W. Remember the building blocks, that's what we call the monomer. Therefore, it's going to be the nucleic, the nucleo, the nucleotide. It's going to be the nucleo, nucleo, nucleotide. Yes. And then molecule W and Y, Y, W. And why we have seen it, W is messenger A, and then Y is transfer A, and then molecule or organelle uh, X, we have seen it is a ribo, is the ribosome. So uh, still the same thing uh, you can see. 
Uh, some people, they call this a protein. This is not a protein. It is only protein if it is 50 and above. And above. Amino, amino acids. So what is this then? This is a polypeptide. Pep peptide uh, chain. Yes, so it is a polypeptide chain. So what is X? This is the um, amino acid. And then uh, what is this? This is transfer, transfer RNA. And then uh, what is Z? We have seen them. These are uh, anticodons or anticodon. And then this is messenger. Messenger RNA and the three bases on the messenger RNA, we say we call them codons. You see, you can't fail such questions. When you come to the question, you see that they are asking you the exactly the same thing. And then asking you to describe the process of transcription, which we have described. So basically, at least you have some light on DNA. And then the, uh, maybe we will talk about the process of translation. And then after that, we wind up with the DZ coding and then the notation. Um, these are some of this, uh, the short qu uh, question uh, you should need to know before you go for the exam. Number one, uh, DNA replication. Uh, you have to know uh, DNA replication, the process by which DNA makes the exact copy of itself. Where does it occur? We have seen it in the, in the nucleus. Uh, when does it occur? We say that it occurs during interphase. Uh, and then we said, uh, why does it occur? We say that to double the chromosome number. And then how does it occur? That's the process of DNA replication. And don't forget that here you have to explain that um, here are the two, you form two separate strands and each strand is acting as a template. And that is the major difference between uh, DNA replication and transcription. So in most cases, people confuse uh, transcription and the DNA replication. Then number two, describe the location and the structure of DNA. Here I explained it at the beginning, the structure of DNA. In most cases, give it six marks. And then a uh, location, we have three locations, that is nuclear DNA, mitochondrial DNA, and chloroplastic DNA. So if they talk about in plants, then you talk about all of the three. But if they talk about in animals, you only talk about the two, that is the, uh, because in, anim in uh, we don't have a chloroplast in animals. So describe the structure of RNA. Uh, structure of RNA, it, it is a little bit the same as DNA, but only a few things which are not there. That is the uracy, uh, thymine, the double strand, and then also the weak hydrogen bonds. <clears throat> uh, describe the involvement uh, of d uh, different types of messenger RNA process in protein synthesis. Here they are talking about the functions of each. Uh, for example, you talk about uh, trans Encryption and then translation. So it is like you are describing the whole process of DNA uh, of trans uh, of protein synthesis. Another thing you need to know here is uh, also describe transcription, transcription in detail, and then also trans translation also in yes, and then also what they can ask you is. Why is uh, the, 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 the mutations which occur? And I say that if uh, you change the code, for example, from GUA to GCA, uh, then if these two, they, these two, they code for the same amino acid, therefore the protein will not change. The structure of the protein will not change. But if the different amino acids are being coded for, then the structure of the protein will be changed. So let's go to... Uh, meiosis let's go to meiosis there are so many questions which can talk about about dna and also the base uh, calculation whereby we're supposed to talk about if adenine is adenine is 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 equal to 10 percent uh what is the percentage of guanine or the ratio of guanine whereby you have to tell us that adenine uh, goes with the thymine and then uh cytosine goes with guanine 
whereby if this is 10 or definitely this is 10 and then 10 plus 10 is equal to 20 since this is percentage therefore i'm gonna say 100 minus minus 20 which means 80 percent and then 80 percent so what happens so it's gonna give us 80 percent for these two so divide by two and then from 40 percent therefore this is 40 then this is 40. so this is just a simple recall um, I hope you remember, please don't go without knowing it because at least those two marks will be able to answer them. And then if they are looking for the ratio, you can put them maybe add a nine now. Um, add a nine, uh, we said it is 10 and then maybe with the one nine, one nine, we said is 40. So divide by 10, divide by 10, and then we're going to get one, two, four. So sometimes they swap it and they say four to one. And then because you've, when now you have seen one and then you have seen four, you have seen four, you have seen one, you just say, you just circle that. It, it is what? It is wrong. So when you go to meiosis, uh, so many points where crossing over takes place. Uh, we call it um, chasma. You see a chasma, splitting of the cytoplasm, we call it cytokinesis. Uh, okay, we can answer them. Failure of the chromosome to separate during meiosis, the non disjunction, the structure, the structure in the cell that forms spindle fiber, centrioles, centrioles, and then the phase of meiosis where homologous chromosomes are aligned along the equator, that is mera phase, mera phase one, because they're saying homologous chromosomes. And the point at which the Two chromatids uh, of the chromosome join, we say we call it a uh, centromere, and this uh, division of the nucleus, uh, division of the nucleus is cario, uh, cariokinesis, kinesis. And then they're saying that uh, the site of meiosis in a female, uh, because in female we find meiosis in ovary. So you write ovary there. Ovary, and then the exchange of genetic material between chromatids uh, in the homologous chromosome, which is crossing, crossing over, and then they are saying the genetic disorder caused by this chromosome on chromosome number twenty-one, that is Down's Down's uh, syndrome syndrome. Yes, and then they are saying that the structure formed between the centrioles during structure formed by the centrioles during the cell division are with spindle fibers yeah spindle fibers and then they're saying that non-sex chromosomes in human we call them non-sex auto autosomes and then they're saying the condition in the cell where uh where there's where there is only one set of chromosome how do you call that condition we call that condition um haploid haplo haploid and then the structure uh, that is responsible for formation of the spindle fiber during spindle fiber. We say that is called the se centrioles. Yes, and then the A chromosome uh, aligned along the equator, the equator none, because here it must be mera, mera, mera phase. Random arrangement of chromosomes, a random arrangement of chromosomes, it must be mera. Phase. So it's A, B only, the site of meiosis in plants, anthers, and ovary, both in this is male, this is female, and then the process um, of meiosis produce, produ process of meiosis produces uh, meiosis result in four haploid daughter cells, four haploid daughter cells, four diploid. So this one becomes wrong, this one becomes wrong. So this is the correct one. The mechanism to introduce genetic variation crossing over is correct. Random arrangement of chromosomes is also correct. So it is both A and A and B. So basically, uh, you see, yeah. so now we are starting the other part of meiosis. All right. Please don't uh, forget to subscribe. Stay in touch. If you have any, any problem, we need to smash these questions and then we get all the marks at the end of this period.
Yeah, when you come to meiosis, there are some questions we can talk about. Uh, let's see uh, what we can go through uh, so that they can also benefit you uh, in, 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 in answering questions related to meiosis. Uh, I know it is a simple topic, but it is a little bit challenging to some other. But let's see if we can smash these questions and then uh, we get a better understanding. If you don't understand the, 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 the topic, let me know. I'll, uh, I'll help you out uh, so that at least we can have more distinctions uh, in this year. All right. They are saying that... Uh, here you are seeing diagrams. Uh, what comes into your mind is uh, the kind of phases which uh, this diagram is indicating. So, uh, what is C? C is spindle fibers. What is B? It is because there are two chromosomes are of the same kind or the same size and structure. Therefore, is homologous C chromosome. Then the joint between two or the point, uh, the, the joint between two uh, chromatids of the same chromosome, it is a central mare. And then uh, diagram A, what does diagram A represent? Because of this one is starting to form. So it can represent a uh, prophase. Uh, prophase, prophase two. Why prophase two? Why not prophase one? It's because now this, uh, they are individual. They are not uh, in pairs. And then number two, you see that crossing over took place a long time ago. And then this one is metaphase. The chromosomes are aligned. Uh, if you turn this, uh, you turn this, and then comes this side, and then this goes that side, so that this thing is uh, in between your uh, your chest. So you see that if this is one side of the chest and then this is on the other side of the chest, uh, I think now you see what I'm trying to say. So you see that they're in the middle, the middle. So big Y, these are the spindle fibers. Yes, if this is the spindle fiber, if this is a spindle fiber and this is the spindle, sorry, uh, centrio, centrio. So this one is uh, in the middle. That's why you say that it is under, it is under mera. Phase. But metaphase, which metaphase? It is metaphase one because these chromosomes uh because these chromosomes are in the middle. Then they say identify A. We have seen it. A is uh centromere. B, what is B? B we have seen it homologous chromosomes. Then C, you see, we have seen it as a spin-off fibers. Identify the phase in diagram three. Uh diagram three, because they are separating, they are separating, yes. So if they are separating, then uh, they are moving to opposite poles. You see them? They are moving to opposite poles. Therefore, it is anaphase. But which, is it anaphase one or it is anaphase two? Is it anaphase one or anaphase two? Because now there are chromatids which are moving to opposite poles. Chromatids moving to opposite poles. Therefore, it's going to be anaphase two. Anaphase two. And then they're saying that um, if it was anaphase one, then this would have been individual, individual chromosome. This would have been a, a chromosome moving to the other side. Also, this one would have been a chromosome and the central mayor there. This would have been a whole chromosome. And also this would have been a chromosome. So it would have been anaphase one. But because the chromatid is moving to opposite poles, therefore it's anaphase two. Then they're saying that write down the number of the diagram shown in the sequence uh, which the phase occurs. The number of the sequence. Uh, they're saying write down the numbers of. Uh, write down the numbers of the diagram to show the sequence in which. So basically, uh, we have to look for meiosis one. The chromosomes are supposed to be in homologous pair. So this one becomes. Uh, this is homologous pair, so it is one. Therefore, it is uh, it is what it is metaphase one, and then this one is prophase two, and then after prophase two they separate. It is so it's gonna be one, it's gonna be two, and then it's gonna be three. So when you are writing the numbers here, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be diagram two, diagram one, and then diagram three. So it's going to be diagram two, diagram one, and then diagram three. Then one difference between 
uh, mera phase one and mera phase two. In mera phase one, the chromosomes are aligned along the equator in homologous pairs. Where in mera phase two, chromosomes align along the equator singly. They are individual. Individual chromosomes are the one which align along the equator. So that is the major difference. And then if we see another question, so label it. Very simple. You see, we usually bring the same kind of questions. So this is uh, spindle fibers. This is centromere. This is chromosome, not homologous chromosome. It's one chromosome. And then this is centro, uh, centrio, centrio, uh, which is being produced by centrosome. Okay, centrio. And then, uh, what causes these uh, differences uh, in the chromosomes or chromatids? It's because of crossing over. Where does uh, when does crossing over takes place? It takes place uh, during prophase one. How does it take place? Homologous chromosomes they align together. Um, they align together. Uh, chromatids of the homologous chromosome, they cross over at a point called chiasma, and then they exchange the genetic material, and then they separate to form different chromosomes which are genetically different. Basically, that is the process of crossing over. You can't go to the exam without knowing the process of crossing over. Identify the phase of meiosis in diagram one. Diagram one, because now, yes, uh, the chromatids are separating. Is the same thing like this one. It's the same thing. The same thing like this is exactly the same. Yes. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be an phase two. And then this one is going to be mera phase two because the chromosomes are aligned along the equator singly. Yes, they align along the equator singly. Then they're saying that identify the phase. You are done with that. State what happens uh, to structure D in the next phase. Where is structure D? Structure D, uh, these are the chromosomes. So they, uh, the chromatids, they move to opposite pole due to contraction of the spindle fiber or due to the shortening of the spindle fiber. Name the process during which genetic material were exchanged, or was exchanged. We say that it is, the process is called crossing over. And then we said it uh, crossing over. And then we said it occurs during an uh, uh, prophase one. Say the consequence if the mission uh, does not occur, if this process does not occur, it means that organisms, uh, it will reduce, it will reduce uh, what you call the genetic variation. It means that more organisms will be more similar to each other. So it will reduce uh, variation among the organisms because Crossing over leads to genetic variation. Then they're saying that uh, give the number of the chromosome present in the original parent cell in this diagram. They didn't say this is a human cell. I don't see anywhere there saying this is a human cell. So you have to know, you have to use the number which is being given. So because this is um, meiosis 2, and meiosis 2 leads to the, 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 the deployed state being uh, halved. So for example, you start with one N and then you form two cells, which is one N, one N, and then another two cells you divide to form one N, uh, one N. So if you start with the uh, four here, therefore it's gonna be two, it's gonna be two, it's gonna be two, it's gonna be two, it's gonna be two. So it means that this is, this is meiosis. Therefore, this is one, this is two. Therefore, the total number is two. Please don't talk about 46 if they didn't say that this is the human cell. And then now they are saying original cell. So if it is original cell, therefore it's going to be 4. And then they, you see now they are saying specifying it. Human cell in the sample diagram 2. Because diagram 2 is haploid, therefore it's going to be 20. It's going to be 20, 23 chromosomes. So basically, that's how you're supposed to answer such questions. So you can answer these questions, at least in meiosis. <clears throat> what is A? Uh, a, in most cases, students confuse it with a nuclear membrane. This is not a nuclear membrane. You can't have a nuclear membrane when the cell is under a metaphase. Therefore, this is a cell membrane. 
This is the chromatid. This is the chromatid. This is the spindle fiber. And then this is the uh, centrio. So uh, this is uh, mera phase, mera, mera phase, uh, mera phase one. While this one is ana phase, ana phase one. Why? Because chromosomes are separating. What about this? This is the, uh, the uh, telophase, 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 uh, telophase one. Why? Because they are chromosomes. They are, they are chromosomes which are still uh, double stranded. Yes. Or at the beginning of uh, prophase, prophase two. Yes. So you see that now, once you name that, you are able to answer this question. What is uh, phase one? We have seen it is mera phase one. What is three? We have seen it is telophase one. Then you're saying that letter uh, only of the part contain DNA, contains DNA. Give the letter of only part that contains DNA. Uh, it is B, because in this case, they didn't mention any chromosome here. It's only B, which is chromatid, and then attaches the central centromere uh, of the chromosome, attaches the centromere chromosome, which is C, attaches the, is the centromere. Yes, and then they're saying that form spindle fiber, which is the centrios. Where is the centrios mentioned? Is D. You see, we are able to answer these questions. Name the organs in humans, male, where meiosis occur. In male, in male, in humans, in humans, male, it occurs in the uh, testes. Testes. While in, 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 in female, in female, it occurs in ovary. Uh, in, in, in plants, plants, it occurs in a uh, anthers, that is male, male, and then stigma, ovary, sorry, ovary in female. So here they produce, they produce sperms, they produce ovum or ova. Here they produce a pollen grain, while well, here they produce uh, ovules. Yes. So basically, that's a simple illustration of meiosis occurring in plants and also in animals. Describe how meiosis lead to genetic variation. So now here you are talking about only processes which talk about genetic variation. Here you talk about crossing over. So you describe crossing over. Then you talk about the random, random, random arrangement, arrangement of, of, Cro, uh, chromosomes uh, during uh, mera phase. Mera, mera, mera phase. Yes, so basically that's what you need to explain. It can lead to genetic variation. You can also, uh, mutation can also be part of meiosis. Why? Because uh, if you talk about, if you talk about uh, Down syndrome, it occurs during the process of what? Because they impersonize. But these two, they can help you to get those marks you are looking for. Huh. Here is an example of uh, a karyotype. You have two individuals. Have two individuals. Um, identify which karyotype here. When you are given a karyotype, look at is there any abnormality? Which one is the male and which one is the female? So if you look at this, uh no abnormality all of them they are in pairs but if you look at that one is long and then one is short therefore this is x this is x and then this is y so therefore this is a male and then this both of them are the same size therefore this is a female so now from there you can now go and then try to answer what term is given the uh chromosome number one to 22 so we call them uh, because they can ask you to describe the structure of a karyotype. Uh, if you call them orosome. The orosomes. And then 23, these are gono, gono, gonosomes. Why? These are sex chromosomes. Yes. State the gender of P. We have seen it. P. Where is P? Male. Because of this. Uh, give one observable reason. Because the chromosome number, uh, the pair chromosome, the chromosome number, oh, the chromosome number 
uh, the chromosome pair number 23. Uh, one chromosome is bigger than the other. Therefore, one is X, one is Y. Hence, the person is a male. Then the same give uh, one observable. We have seen it. Each of the pairs shown in shown is a homologous pair of chromosome. State the origin, the origin, state the origin of each chromosome uh, in the homologous pair of the chromosome. So here, where do they? They are two, two. Where are, are they coming from? These pairs, one is coming from the father, from the father, and then one is coming from the mother. Yeah, that's why they are two. That's why we say that uh, when the sperm, the sperm comes, is haploid, and then fuses the ovum, which is haploid. So one chromosome, another chromosome, when they combine, you form the pair. So it's the same thing. Sperm, ovum, sperm, ovum, sperm, ovum, sperm, ovum. Like that, like that, like that. So one comes from the father, one comes from the mother, and then you form a diploid, a zygote. Then they are saying that the diagram below represents the distribution of chromosome uh, 21 as uh, it is appears in the gamete. So it's the same thing, guys. Yeah. So you see that you always find almost the same diagrams, so, uh, same structures. So now draw a diagram to show the cell during anaphase 2 of meiosis. Now here, when I ask you to draw a diagram, you must write a title. That is the first thing, title. You cannot draw anything without a title. Use a sharp pencil. It must be neat. Yes, someone is going to ask you, is my, am I neat when I'm writing? Yeah, I'm saying you must be neat. I'm not a student. All right, uh -huh. I'm saying that, so when you draw, they're saying this is the uh, profess two. Uh, profess two, why? Because they are single. So what do you do? You draw the cell, and then they're saying uh, during anaphase. So it means that uh, before it's going to be like this, and then the short one down. So this is prophase. Eh? Just drawing a stroke, but you have to show the variations when you're drawing. So during anaphase, it means that uh, one, and then one has a variation. Eh? So it's still moving to the poles, and then also. Then the short one uh, is going to be the short one. And then it's also moving. You see, but it also has the biggest variation. The biggest variation. And then this other one is completely shaded. You see, you have to show that. And then this is spindle. This is chromatid moving. And then, yeah. And then it's the cell membrane. Then write the title. Yeah, at least you are able to answer uh, such question. Yes, so that when you come, we will maybe uh, give you a, a mark for title. Yes, a mark for drawing, correct drawing. And then maybe uh, um, those are two marks. Now, maybe three marks for labeling. Yes. So uh, that's why I think labeled diagram. So my sis is also easy. If you look at most of the questions, you will see that we have answered those questions. Can you answer this? Yes. 10 seconds, 8 seconds, 7 seconds, 5 seconds, 3 seconds, 1 second. Okay, let's see. Then they're saying that uh, this is what? Spindle fibers. What is this? Homologous chromosome. What is this? Central 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 mare. yes so these are homologous chromosomes and then this is the centrio and then this is the uh this is the cell membrane so you can answer these questions you see nothing which is going to be new in your paper name the process diagram above you see it is mirror phase you see you have to turn it so that these things are in the sides check you see, they're in the sides, so that you see now clearly it is a meta phase. Name the process, name the phase, represent a diagram. Uh, we have seen it. Then they are saying name part C. We have seen it also, centrio, centromere, 
rep uh, then B represent homologous chromosomes. B represent what is homologous chromosome? Chromosomes which have the same structure and the same size, and then uh, they carry genes. Uh, genes uh, of the same characteristics are always on the same locus. Yeah, so we call them homologous chromosome. Then they are not genetically identical, but genes of the same characteristic, they are in the same locus. Locus, locus is a position of a gene. It's singular. Loci when they are men. Explain the appearance of chromosomes in diagram. Uh, why are they shaded like this? Is due to crossing over, which took place in prophase one, whereby the chromatid exchange the genetic material. That's why they are like that. They are saying that total number of DNA is uh, the total number, the total amount of DNA is 12. There are units each daughter cell at the end of the cell division. How many DNA was in the parent cell? So they are, they are saying that the daughter, the total number of DNA is 12 units in each daughter cell. Remember, you start with the uh, 2N. You start with what? 2N. Yes. So 2N, uh, and, uh, you, you form two cells, 1N, 1N, then you form another two cells, uh, you form another two cells, so 1N, 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 1N. So if you started with the, uh, if your daughter cells are having 12, 12 here, so it means that the, then if you want to get the parent, is times 2, so which is 20, 24. So the answer is going to be 24. 24 DNA literary units. Don't forget to put the units as they are being given to you. So, so many questions, you'll find them like this. This is the serial karyotype. Male or female is a female. Why chromosome number 23 is having chromosomes which are of the same size and the shape. See? So, describe the karyotype of person with Down syndrome. So, a karyotype with Down syndrome will have an extra chromosome on chromosome number 23. Yes, so the pair chromosome, so there will be three instead of what? Instead of two. So you see that these diagrams, you these questions, you can answer them very well. Yes, you can answer them very, very well. All right, let's just do few to few questions about it. Uh, what is this? What is this? This is a central centromere what is b is a crossing over point where crossing over takes place therefore is chiasma these two uh, chromosomes under crossing over we call it a bivalent bivalent or chromosome homologous chromosomes during crossing over then this what is this uh, this is a chromatid and then what is this is a chromosome so these are sister chromosomes so now you can answer the question describe the process that occurred at d so it means that they're asking to describe the process of crossing over. I explained it before. This is where uh, tricky things come from. They're saying the certain number species has 42 chromosomes. They're not saying it's human. So don't talk about 46. Yes, please don't talk about 46. They are saying 42. Uh, the muscle cell, it's muscle cell. Give, remember muscle cells, those are autosomes. They're always 2N. Yes. Give the chromosome number of each of the sperm cells. So it's going to be half because sperm cell is 1N. Therefore, the answer here is going to be um, 21. The skin, skin is uh, autosomes, is 2N. Therefore, it's going to be 42, 42. And then uh, ovum of the female of the counterpart is the same thing. It's going to be 1N, which is 21. In most cases, the number of chromosomes are the one which are confusing students and they end up losing marks. So it's the same thing here. Crossing over took place. They can ask you to draw the diagram after crossing over. So uh, members, uh, students, don't, please don't uh, lose marks. Don't lose hope. You will make it. You will make it. I'm going to come back for genetics and in inheritance and then after that i will go to human evolution thank you very much for watching don't forget to subscribe like and share don't also stop to comment so that i know where exactly i should put more effort and where to help 
uh, so that you can get your distinction.